One of the most important things and concepts to understand in Rebel programming is the idea of the block or the series. Um, and to understand why blocks are so, so important, it's important to get some perspective about what you're trying to do when you program. Almost all computer programming um, it is in some way related to managing and manipulating data, uh, saving images, uh, manipulating images, saving um, uh, scheduling data, saving data of some, some sort. That's what you typically do with a computer. Um, and all of computing is basically about manipulating bits of data and reusing it, storing it, organizing it. Um, that's what you do with a computer. Um, data also could be, for example, control data sent to a, a, a device, a robot, um, a, an element in a, in a car. Um, but basically, um, when you're dealing with computers, you're dealing with manipulating data. Blocks are Rebel's main data manipulation structure. Um, blocks basically are just um, uh, a, a collection of pieces of data grouped together. Um, we can assign variable words to those. In this case, um, we can assign a variable word some colors to this block multiple pieces of uh, text data. The words red, yellow, blue, black. Here and now, red, yellow, blue, black words are assigned to the word some colors. Again, we can print it, uh, we could upload it to a web server, we could um, do any variety of things with those, with those words. Uh, it will print out those words. We can also take, you've seen blocks before, and the GUI examples, blocks are just multiple items, any, any sort of data that's usable in Rebel, um, that's included in between square brackets. In this case, we're going to assign these GUI items, these GUI uh, widgets, to the word GUI-layout. Assign it. And now the word GUI-layout, GUI-layout, refers to those, uh, those widget items. Now we can create a, a GUI, a window, using the words view layout. And instead of having to type in all of those widgets, we can just type in the variable word that refers to them. And put that into Rebel. And you'll see we get a window that has those three widgets, a button, a field, and a text list. Um, like we've seen before, you can spread out data in blocks on, on separate lines. You can put any empty white space that you want um, inside of a block. And Rebel knows that each of those is a separate item. And here they've been indented to make it a little bit more readable. This time we're taking that block and assigning it to the word GUI-layout2. Put that into Rebel. You'll see each of these separate lines whenever you have a block that spans several lines um, in the Rebel interpreter is preceded on that line by a, by a little um, bracket. So you can see you're working with a multi-line block. Now that block is referred to by GUI-layout2. And put that into a GUI. And you'll see that all of that data is included in the block. And the GUI represented by that block of, block of data. So matter what you've seen before. Um, like you've seen before, um, it's standard practice to indent um, lines of data. Um, in this example, we've got um, a block of data that contains another block of data, which also contains another block of data, um, which also contains another clock of data. And uh, to separate that, to make it more usable, um, you can put it on separate lines and indent each separate block so you can see um, each block is uh, a little bit more clearly visible now where it begins and ends. So this outside block ends down here. Now there's a block indented that ends right here. 
has a block of data that ends right here. That block contains another block, which is indented right here. Makes it a little bit easier to view. It's not required, but um, most people will do that when they're writing code, not just in Rebel, but in, in all languages. Um, in this example, we've got some scheduled data, um, and we separate each block onto a different line. Um, this block contains one user's data, and this next line contains another user's data. They've all been indented so that you can see that there's one block containing a variety of um, uh, pieces of info. Pop that into Rebel. Now the word schedule refers to that entire block of data. And we can put that into a layout using um, a little list widget, and now the data that's going to be put in that list widget is all that data that we've assigned to schedules. So instead of having that entire uh, block of data typed in right here, um, we can just refer to the block of data. And later on, we can add items. We can add people's names to the schedule data. And whenever we view it in a view, it'll show us the current data that's included in that, uh, in that block. And a nice little list widget in the GUI. That shows us all that data.